Hello people YouTube, this is Track 6606 and today with me I got Real Flight 9 here. We're going to do an unboxing and review video of what comes in the package. Uh, I did buy the radio edition, so I have the new uh, Interlink DX controller. So I'm going to go over that a little bit as well. And of course the new features of Real Flight 9, uh, what it comes with and wh you know, what you get in the package. So basically what I'm going to do is just kind of show you what comes inside the package of this new version and also a little bit of the, uh, the features on the DX controller, uh, kind of the, you know, hands on view of it. And then later on, we'll go on the actual sim and start showing the actual features of what the and functions that they actually do. But for now, we're going to kind of show you what is included. And then, of course, the new features of the DX controller. So right out of the box, you know, here's your typical products here. You got, of course, your box and you got the uh, your disk. Uh, it actually comes with uh, two discs this time. There's actually two different discs for the simulator. I guess they've uh, already maxed out the space of one disc, so they've got to put a second one in there. Uh, when I was downloading it, it was actually very little on that second disc. So when it finished uh, up, when it finished downloading the first uh, first disc, it said, in, "You know, insert second disc to complete the download." I insert it, boop, done. So there was hardly anything on that second disc. So I guess. So I guess they kind of just ran out of space in the first disc. And now they're starting to do a two disc package deal. Uh, and also, obviously, I got the DX uh, edition. So this is the new Spectrum DX radio that it came with. Uh, I got some ups and downs about it. I think it's a really cool radio. I will admit that hands down, it's a cool radio. Uh, I messed with it for a little bit and it's uh, it's not bad, actually. Uh, I'll go over the ups and downs with it, but it's a good radio for what it is. I like the features of it. So let's go take a look of the radio since there's not really a whole lot more to go over in the box and, and, and the, the, the disc that it comes with. So we're going to go ahead and look into uh, this new DX transmitter and see uh, just firsthand looks of, of this new radio. Okay, so a few new things about this uh, DX transmitter here. Uh, the gimbals, they feel pretty good. I will say they are, uh, the throttle here is pretty smooth. Uh, the tension of the sticks are pretty firm. Of course, it's probably designed more as a heli radio or as a plane radio than a heli radio. Uh, that can be, I'm probably going to adjust that later and, and loosen up these sticks because I like them a little looser. Even when I do fly planes, I like them a little looser. I don't like them this stiff. But this is a typical basic setup for, you know, planes. And that's mostly what they're going to focus on because I mean, this isn't a dedicated heli sim. Some people say that they don't really care about helis too much. I saw, uh, I've heard a few people say that. It's like, well, you got to look at it. This is not a heli only sim. Uh, so this is mostly for the plane stuff, but there is helis involved. Uh, so implemented scroll wheel. Uh, and just like I was doing on my inter introduction video, uh, this does scroll through the models. You got the push button there, just like on the actual spectrum scroll wheels, you know, on the, on their real radios to go through the menu parameter settings. Uh, this will go through all of your models, you know, and all that stuff as there was a field. And this basically is like that, that, you know, trim button that was on the, uh, interlink radio. So the feel of the radio, um, it feels okay. I mean, I can't really say much. It feels just like typically any other radio, uh, especially the Spectrum radios. Um, can't really say anything bad about it. It feels like a radio. Uh, just like the Spectrum radios, you know, this little light lights up here, uh, which is kind of cool, you know, just a little light there. Uh, in the case that you got power to it. Uh, one thing that I will say kind of a downside, and this is just me because I am a pincher. My hands are constantly rubbing against the knob and this top switch. And that is kind of a downside for me. The spacing isn't that much. Now, because I'm a pincher, I like my sticks long. This isn't like the Fataba one where you can go up and then take a bo that top bottom piece to tighten it up. So I may actually take this off, you know, and put some shims. Just put a few shims in there so it actually stops right at that point so it'll lengthen it so this this piece right here doesn't slide over the shaft uh i'll put like a washer or something so i can throw I, I can thread it down tight but it'll stop right at that point that's probably what i'm going to do that'll fix my problem but yeah my like it is my fingers are rubbing against here so people that are pinching you may come up with that problem 
but it's not i don't really consider it a problem as something that can be if it can be fixed if it's something that couldn't be fixed then i would consider that a problem but i can easily fix that uh, another cool feature and like i mentioned in the introduction video is on the back of the radio you have this little device back here and what this is is this is this is how you can switch between all four modes so your mode one two three and four right now it's set up for mode two because in the united states that's what we most of us use is mode two but by removing this little insert piece you can adjust it from any version so i just moved that there and what this basically do, did is, is i don't as far as like the settings that's all going to be programmable so on the simulator it, these sticks will do whatever movement they need to do but now the throttle is actually uh it's got springs to it it's not ratcheted where you can keep it in that position it actually goes back to center now as well as this right here now you flip it again it's going to be the same because now we're in mode one it's going to be the same uh it's just the the programming is going to be different so what these what these do are going to be different but as far as physical uh stick movements they're going to be the same and you go back to mode three now this is your throttle while this is whatever other channels mode three is but we went from you know mode two what most of the people in the us use uh is this is your throttle now we've got it over here so this is actually a really cool feature here something that i it's something that i probably would never use because i fly mode two but eh, if i'm feeling frisky i could probably go ahead and just try out another mode and try to practice it just to see if i can do it uh but also now they don't have to have multiple different mo mode packages to ship out. They can ship out the same one and it'll work for anyone in, in the whole world. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's, that's a unique feature. And also, what if you get a guy that's visiting from a different country and they want to, you have a sim and you're going to let them try them out. Uh, you can let them try on this radio. They can switch the mode where they want and they can use it for. Is it a feature that a lot of us is probably going to be using a lot? Probably not. But it is a cool unique feature to have on this new radio so with that there said guys that pretty much concludes the unboxing portion of this video uh now let's go inside and go into the uh the actual sim and start looking at the other new features that this uh simulator offers all right everyone uh welcome to the sim now uh, a few things i want to mention out here is uh before i start going over this uh this part of the video uh, I just want to make a disclaimer that some of these features uh, that I mention in this sim are probably originated from Real Flight 8 Horizon Hobby Edition. I didn't purchase that sim later, so I don't know what features are new from that sim and what are different or, or what are the same. So this is going to kind of go over everything from Real Flight 8 through Habico to Real Flight 9. Uh, horizon hobby so it's going to go over from that leap there so it's basically going to be including uh features from real flight 8 horizon hobby edition as well as real flight 9. so uh one new thing that i did notice was when i was downloading the software registration and activation so registration you must do online before completing the download for the sim which that is new, honestly, because before you can actually download it and it'll say to get the latest version or get updates or whatever uh, to register it. But this time you have to register it before completing the download. I want to say that's probably mostly so people don't, don't like copy the sim on other users and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not too sure. But I, I think for me it kind of like sucks a little bit because I don't have the best internet here. So, for people that don't have internet, I don't know how you work around that. So, uh, but you have to register online before finishing the download. Uh, another thing that I noticed is the serial number. So, you got to type out the serial number before completing the download. Uh, usually, before it was on the disk and on the transmitter. Now, it's just the disk. You don't have to register the, the transmitter. That's very convenient because that will always fade off. Like, the one on my Futaba radio, 
uh, the Interlink Elite Edition. It's completely gone. I don't know what number that is. <laughs> so, uh, next thing I want to mention is uh, I did fly all the new aircrafts. Uh, all They're all new aircrafts that are Horizon Hobby-based aircrafts, whether they're planes, helicopters. Uh, the only thing I didn't fly was the new quads. I don't even know which ones are new, honestly. So I didn't, I didn't even touch the quads. Um, the safe technology. Talk a little bit about that. There is a training uh, session in there that will talk about the uh, safe technology. Uh, some aircrafts do have it, some do not. Uh, the ones that do, it's for people that are beginners. Uh, and this is just like off the, the real uh, Horizon models that have it. But it lets you switch between uh, safe beginner, safe intermediate, and then AS3X experience. So what it does is it will limit your controls. Uh, it'll limit the bank angle of the model uh, for pitch and roll, so aileron and elevator. And uh, so you can go full deflection on the stick, and it will not roll all the way over. Uh, for intermediate, you can flip that, and it will give you a better angle you know it'll give you more more degrees of pitch but it will still not roll all the way over it won't be until you flip it to experience which is just straight out as3x but you have you have full deflection of your throws then you can start doing your roll flips and everything so just like the real models it's in the simulator as well and they explain it a lot better in more detail in the uh the training sessions that talk about that. I'm not going to get into de too much detail about it, but that's just kind of the basic overall of it. Uh, they will talk about it more in those training sessions. So if you are interested, definitely go to the training sessions uh, and you'll be able to learn everything about it there. Uh, some other models actually have uh, the GPS uh, built into it. So you can have uh, GPS geofence. And what that is, and that's also integrated into SAFE, is it would give you a, uh, a fenced-in area. So if you fly beyond that point, the model will automatically gain, gain, uh, take over control, circle around back, it'll do a gesture with the wings, uh, rocking of the wings, and it'll basically give you control back. So you can literally just drop the radio down, and it'll literally fly in a circle. And if it actually gets low on battery, it'll land itself. Uh, it's full-blown GPS uh, controlled. So, outside of the, the training sessions, there's also a, the classic training sessions, which basically has your tutorial on, on you know, plane flying, helicopter flying, uh, uh, and with each of those, they have like uh, tier one, tier two, tier three of each one of those uh, tutorials. Uh, they also have, and this is new, uh, that I've seen, and I kind of like this, uh, it's a tutorial video of a flying to music XFC routine uh, for planes. I watched a few of those those sessions. They're actually pretty cool. Uh, it will give you the step by step of a full routine for XFC. What I like to see maybe later in maybe an update or real flight 9.5 if it ever came out is if they ever did like XFC for helicopters or F3N. Uh, I would love to see some kind of F3N. Uh, play by play and, and with F3N there is a bunch of different set maneuvers uh, that you can do so you, you know do the set maneuvers and then of course flight to music to involve with those set maneuvers as well as the freestyle round uh, that would be really cool to see them actually put that in there because I've done F3N it's fun uh, new challenges so there is based off what I can tell I can only see two new challenges uh, integrated into this version from back you know, since the last one I've had, which was Roof Flight 8. And that is basically a hangar obstacle course for planes and then an FPV racing. Now, the FPV racing, I did try that out. And that's actually kind of fun. It gives you a tutorial there. I know the Roof Flight 8 had something like that. Uh, but this one here is in more detail. I actually like this one a lot. It's pretty fun. So I mentioned about the new aircrafts. Uh, they are all Horizon Hobby based aircrafts. And uh, so basically it's from like... You know, from E-Flight to Hangar 9 style models, so from your, your basic classics trainer style all the way to the, your advanced uh, Hangar 9 professional built uh, models. And uh, so you have like the, you know, what, one I really like is the uh, the Carbon Z Cessna. Uh, that one's actually a lot of fun. Uh, that's that's one that you can even do some slight 3D with. It's, it's a fun plane. And even on the sim, it, it flies great. 
that also has the sec technology in there as well. Uh, and then all the way to like the some of the Hangar 9 models, like the um, uh, Carbon Cub 15C, you got the um, Cub Crafters X Cub 60C, uh, you got a P51 Mustang, uh, even the Ultra Stick, uh, the 30 the 30cc Ultra Stick. Uh, that's pretty fun there. It's got some uh, mixing with the flaps and ailerons in there. Uh, some some pretty nice models there. They also have like the um, you know the F27 Ev Evolution, which is the Evolution model of the F27 Q Striker, which is a classic uh, Delta Wing style plane. And uh, I still have that classic F27 Q Striker, and it's so much fun to fly. So you know they have the um, F27 Evolution in here. Uh, some other really cool models that they have is like the, the new E-Flight EC-1500 Twin. Uh, that's actually pretty fun to fly there. So last on the list here I want to talk about is, is this sim worth it? You know, is it really worth buying this simulator? And I will say, so for a person that is brand new in the hobby, they want to get started, they want to learn how to fly, they don't know how to fly, then I will say, go ahead and get this simulator. It is worth it. Uh, because those safe features and everything can really teach you how to fly. Now, some people may say like, well, if it, if, if you are gonna be flying on the simulator and you have that safe stuff, so you basically, you have a safety net and a safety net, which is a sim, because a sim just, you know, you can crash all you want and who cares, you hit a reset button. So basically you got a safety net in the sim. You know, what's the point of that? Just buy the real thing and do it in real life. Sure, I see, I see what you're saying, but Someone can learn on here, get the idea of what those models can do, and then they can go to more advanced and start doing it on their own before they go out and buy a real model and do it on the real thing. And then they could actually, you know, buy that that model with the safe technology and practice with the safe until they feel more confident. Because that's the biggest thing, confidence. Anybody, you know, can learn how to fly and be really good at it. But until you actually do it for the real thing, where you have real money invested, you only have one shot. If you crash, that's it. You know, like, you can't just hit a reset button and fly again. It, whether or how bad it is, you, you know, chances are you flying it after a crash is very unlikely. That, that makes a difference. That makes a huge difference in your confidence. I mean, I can tell you right now, I, I go in here and I fly, you know, maneuvers and planes and, sim, and helicopters in the sim. I can do them ten times better than I can in real life. You know, I go in real life and I lock up because, like, well, I'm dealing with a real model, you know. Real possibilities of crashing, so that's probably where this thing could it, it could be a confidence booster. So for new people, I will say absolutely go ahead and get your flight nine because of those those newer safe features and all that stuff. For people who already know how to fly, so let's say a person that knows how to fly, they don't have a sim, they've never flown a sim, or at least they don't have they haven't had one in a very long time, and they want to get a new one, but they know how to fly. And they know how to fly, you know, fairly well. They want to get the simulator to just have fun, goof off, or they want to progress in their in their flying. That's when I'll say it isn't necessary to get Real Flight 9. Like, you don't have to buy Real Flight 9. Any of the older ones uh, would, would suit you just well. Because you're not going to need that safe technology if you know how to fly. You're not going to need that. So that's when I'll say Real Flight 9 is not necessary for that type of person. And then the last thing I want to talk about is, is it worth to upgrade to Real Flight 9 from, you know, 6, 6.5, 7, you know, all the way to 8? Depending on who you are. And for the most part, if you already have a sim, you typically know how to fly. If you were really looking to try out these new features, and you really like Horizon models, Horizon Hobbies aircrafts and stuff like that, and you really want to try these new safe see how it works before you actually find the real one, then sure, absolutely, go for it. But do you need to upgrade? Like, for myself, you know, I upgrade every year. I've been doing that since 6.5. For myself, no, I, I did not need to upgrade this. I do not actually need this simulator. It does not give me the, the benefits that I'm looking for. Because of the level that I'm at, I don't see a need. It doesn't fit a need uh, for me. So, Real Flight 8, perfectly fine and I'm probably going to be using Real Flight 8 more than this. But if you are, you know, if you are just wanting to, sure, go for it. But it's not necessary whatsoever. I would not recommend getting it unless you see a use for those new features. Like you are going to start training new people or something like that or go to a school and 
you know, give a class on that or something. I don't, you know, whatever. Sure, absolutely. If you have a use for it, go for it. But do you absolutely need it if you know how to fly? I wouldn't recommend it. I, I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not trying to say that this simulator is not worth it at all. I'm not saying that at all. It, it's a great simulator. It actually does work really well. I do like some of the new features, but again, there's some things where I, I wish there was more of. Um, like some of the new models here. Uh, I, they have a lot of planes in, in here, which is really great, but I really wish it was having more helicopters. The only helicopters I see in here are the Blade 270 uh, V2 and the, uh, the Fusion 270 and the Fusion 480. That's only models, only helicopters that I see. That's kind of a downer for me because I really like flying helicopters. I do fly planes. I do love flying planes. But I like to see some new models, new helicopters. I didn't see that, unfortunately. But again, that's where you got your swap pages for. Because honestly, half the models that I fly, actually most of the models I fly on Reflect 8 are from the swap pages. So I rarely fly stock planes and stock helis anyways. So it's up to you. That's my point on it. Uh, that's just my opinion. But it is completely up to you. Last thing I want to note, guys, is it's been fun. But I will say this is probably going to be my last review video of a new real flight simulator. Mostly because it's getting expensive. And for these small reviews, especially this one, it kind of hit me kind of hard. Because before, I've always seen... Like, oh yes, there's all these new features and everything, and, and I, I absolutely love it. This one, I didn't quite see that. So I, I, I just, I don't really see a huge need for this simulator for myself. This is for myself. And spending the money is, is really, really hard to do these days. So I just don't think I'm going to do it anymore. I will probably still do introductions, but I probably won't do reviews of the newest simulator so like and also the fact that horizon is taking over i don't think they're going to to be honest i don't think we're going to get a free 9.5 upgrade for people who've purchased nine i i don't see that happening it's probably going to be a hundred dollar upgrade the only way you're able to get a free up upgrade is if you purchase it purchase it like a few months before the um the new sim is released like they did with this one if you purchase Horizon Hobby Edition by like July of 2019, you get this upgrade for free. That's the only thing I see. I don't see them doing a free update for, you know, nine users uh, for you know when 9.5 comes out. So if it is a free up upgrade, then absolutely. But if it's not, this is this is going to be it. This is going to be the last one. I'll still do an introduction, but that's it. That doesn't mean I'm not going to do any more real flight videos. Now, of course, I've been very invested in this podcast, this helicopter podcast that I do with a few friends of mine, because I am the main editor for that. Uh, that takes up a lot of time. If you still have questions and you still want me to make some how-to videos, absolutely. Send me a comment. I constantly, you know, reply to comments all the time. I get a notification on there and immediately I, I click on it. I try to get back to you as soon as possible. So if you have a question, just, you know, Write a comment on whatever video it is, and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. And I and I'll try to make a video for you if you need if you need one. So I'm still going to try to do real real flight videos, tutorial videos, and how to videos and all that stuff. But as far as review videos, that's most likely going to stop today. It's been fun, guys, and I love it, but it's just getting hard to do now. So that basically concludes this uh, real flight nine review video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I didn't deter anybody from actually getting this simulator because it is a really good sim. Just think about what you need to use it for. Think about what the reason why you want to get this sim before you actually go ahead and get it. That's all I want to say, guys. And uh, thanks for watching. And I hope to see you at the next one. Bye, guys.